So um, what we're doing today, we're going to weld some, some uh, pins on some side plates. We already TIG welded some of them. Uh, TIG welded them from the back. They're pressed in, pinned, and they have a chamfer on them, and so there's a nice groove. And we, we TIG welded a few of them. But uh, I did a series of videos on the Everlast um, Power TIG 250EX. Okay? I saw, I saw Alex, the, the uh, CEO or whatever at the welding show, talked to him a little bit about his machines, kind of got intrigued, mostly because I was looking for content for this website. And I know that people are interested in the Everlast uh, brand. Are they any good? You know, so I, that's why I have a, a, my website is an information website. If I don't have good information on there, nobody wants to come there, okay? So I know people are interested in the Everlast, and I, I was interested in learning more about it so I could answer questions. So I did a series. I wasn't asked to do the videos. I just did them because I know people want to know. They became pretty popular, and uh, so so now Everlast uh, is interested in me uh, trying out their Power Pro 256, which is a multi-process machine, TIG stick plasma cutting. And uh, I did some welding, uh, hooked it up, used an air-cooled torch with it, didn't hook up a cooler, used an air-cooled torch, and uh, tried using the finger control uh, along with some upslope, downslope settings and all that, and welded several of these things with that. And then I swapped over to the foot pedal and shot some video of the arc doing it. Uh, AC and DC, you can do aluminum, but then you throw in the plasma cutter and you lose a couple of features. And I think the only two features you lose are the spot weld timer and lift arc. Two things I would probably never use anyway. So to me, gaining the plasma cutter, losing the spot timer and lift arc, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, you know, I, I didn't really need a plasma cutter the first time around. Uh, I already already had one, but to, you know, if I'm in the, if I was in the market for uh, a TIG machine and I could get a plasma cutter capable of cutting like I think, gosh, three quarters, seven eighths, something like that, uh, you get that kind of thrown in. Yeah, I, I'm interested in that, especially when it, it doesn't suffer on the TIG welding. But does it? Okay, that's the question. It's a question we all want to know. Does it is, it is it a good TIG welder, or is it just a half-assed TIG welder and that, that plasma cuts? Uh, that's kind of what we want to know. Now, let me answer a couple of questions here. Number one, I cannot speak to how well these hold up, and I can't speak to how well, how good the customer service is. My best advice to you is go to Welding Web or some of the more popular welding forums where there's whole sections about Everlast machines, and just get a gut there on what people are saying. You know whether you know. How many people are complaining about uh, problems that didn't get resolved, or are they bragging on how their problems did get resolved? I'm kind of staying out of that. I don't have a I don't have a dog in the fight. My interest is in trying this machine out and kind of showing you, giving you an idea before you step out there and plunk down your cash, giving you an idea uh, on, on what it's all about. Is it any good? Is it going to start? It's going to blow holes in thin sheet metal. Does it have a, a poor low end, or is it going to is it got an erratic arc, or is it all these buttons just there for looks, or you know, these kind of things? So I'm going to give it a little run through its paces. I have a really good test. Uh, I'm going to cut a bunch of holes in three quarter inch stainless steel with plasma cutter. That's coming up. That's coming up uh, next. So that's going to be interesting, and uh, you want to stick around for that. I, I don't have any idea how it's going to do. So, uh, <laughs> but but we're going to find out. We're going to, we're going to put it through its paces a little bit. So. Uh, the welding, I've already done. Tip welding on DC, I haven't done any AC yet, but smoothness of the arc, pulsing capability and all that, I, I can't tell the difference in between it and the, and the Power TIG 250EX. I'm throwing out all these names, but you have to know the difference. So again, this is the Power Pro 256 multi-process TIG stick plasma machine. And uh, I think you'll see in the video that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly capable machine. I have a Dynasty, you can probably see up in the corner, there's a Dynasty 200DX up on the wall. I did a lot of the welding with that. I swapped back and forth. The only thing I like better about that is I have a nice small water cooled torch on it. I will be putting a small water cooled torch on this. I do not like big torches. I'm sure as far as big torches go, the one that comes with it is about as good as any. I just don't like it. All right, I'll shut up now, and uh, we'll get to the arc shots and some of the uh, some of the things that uh, we welded with the with this 256 model here. All right, did you hear that blast of gas? 
That blast of gas happens all the time if you don't have a real precise regulator. I'm not dinging the Everlast regulator. It's, it's about like most regulators in which uh, they're not adjustable enough to keep that first blast of gas going. And that's why that's a good reason to use the pre-flow um, because that blast will, will make that arc jump places you don't want it when you're starting off. It'll give it an erratic start. If you set the, set the pre-flow for about one second and let it settle down, you'll get a lot better start. And this is on any machine, so that's just a good tip for you. That's a good reason for using the pre-flow. It's not so much to get that gas to the tip on a, on a short uh, stick out like this. You know, you probably need about a quarter of a second, but it gives you a much better start with the pre-flow set. All right, so I'm welding the pins in the in the back of these big one-inch side plates, and they have a chamfer on them, and I'm just kind of I'm using the uh, torch switch with the upslope downslope, and uh, no foot pedal. So I've got the machine set probably about I don't know I think it was 165 amps something like that. You can kind of see it ramp up here. It takes it just about a couple seconds to ramp up to to, uh, to amperage, and then I'm uh, stable and I can go. And what you can see me dipping in closer when I'm pushing the puddle forward, a tighter arc, and then I lengthen the arc when I'm adding the rod. Uh, that's just kind of a, uh, something that works, if, especially if you don't have amperage control. You need to get that metal to flow into the bottom of the root with, uh, with uh, technique instead of with extra amperage, because I don't have any more amperage to use if I'm using the torch switch. I'm melting these little machine tits off so I don't have to uh, grind them later on. Here's a little here's a little higher magnification shot, same thing. You can see the tungsten is not needle sharp. I like a sharp tungsten, but when I'm welding over a bunch of MIG tacks like this, you can see that MIG tack, all that, so some of that oxidation kind of, you know, crinkle up and it jumps onto the electrode and, you know, you're either going to sharpen electrodes every five seconds or you're going to live with some of that. So, uh, you know, on these welds uh, are hidden and they just have to be burned in pretty good and uh, they're sandwiched against the crawler body and then welded again so there's no problem there. The bosses are carbon steel welded to the carbon steel uh, body and the thing about the bosses is you want to uh, not completely weld up to the corner because you don't want to chew the corner off. So this first weld I'm using about 30 pulses a second with that Everlast 256 and uh, 30 pulses a second, about 30% on time, and 30% background current. And you can see it doesn't try to wander up to the uh, to the top edge and melt it off. Now that can be done with technique. Pulsing is not absolutely necessary; it just makes it a little easier. I'm going to show another little technique here uh, without the pulse, just to show you it's not you know you, you you don't live or die by pulse usually, but it's just one of those. Little, little features that makes makes life easier sometimes. Here I'm just going to leave the rod in the puddle, no pulse, and uh, the rod in the puddle kind of helps cool it off. And a uh, little bit of side to side weave action, kind of a tight arc, just watching that top of that bead to make sure that it doesn't uh, wick up, and uh, that works too. This is kind of like a socket weld on a you know small bore piping, if you've ever done any pipe welding, except for the fact that it's got a corner on it. All right, I can only weld little short segments here. I would probably try to make it further if I was I wasn't filming this, but the camera goes out of focus, and so that's the reason for the you know stopping and starting so much on these on these little round round joints. Here I'm sucking it up big time. I am uncomfortable. I'm in a bind. I'm upside down kind of, and wrapped around the tripod trying to film it, and uh, it's not working out too good for me. Shaking like a dog passing a peach pit bad torch angle, jittery, you name it. But you can see the arc is pretty smooth. <laughs> it's not the machine's fault. This is me sucking it up. All right, another technique I like to use a lot on these round things is just leave the rod in the puddle, no side to side, back and forth, a little back and forth. Keep a little pressure on the rod to keep it feeding in the puddle as the puddle needs it. And you can make some headway here. You can it just picks up the travel speed. I'm going kind of slow here, but I, I really fly on these sometimes when I get rolling. And it gives a look with real fine ripples on it, and because uh, the rod's in the puddle. All right, there's a finished product there. Now here's two that were done. One with the Dynasty 200 DX, and one with the Everlast 256. See if you can tell the difference. I'm just saying. 
Thanks for watching. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.